Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Thursday to each and every one of you patriots across this amazing land, brothers and sisters of the Second Amendment. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. As you can see, we are not in the home studio. We are on the road today. We are pursuing freedom across this great nation, but that does not mean that we cannot cover something amazing that you guys need to know about because FRTs, the Force Reset Triggers, the ATF, National Gun Groups, we are going to have a clash because another lawsuit has been filed. Check it out. Everything will be linked right down there in the description box below, and I cannot wait to hear what you guys think about this one because the push for our rights against the ATF's overreach and infringements is keeping on going. So make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on. Help us spread freedom twice daily on this channel, and thank you for that consideration. But my brothers and sisters, we got to talk about something that just dropped against the ATF from the National Association for Gun Rights. This is in the Fifth Circuit. Now we're going to come back to that in a second, but that's an important piece of what we're talking about. But let me show you what they're going after. So this is from August 8th. Washington, D.C. Today, the National Association for Gun Rights filed a lawsuit against the ATF, the National Association for Gun Rights v. Garland, in federal court in the Northern District of Texas. That's important. This action was filed in the same appellate court or circuit that ruled earlier this year that bump stocks are not machine guns in Cargill v. Garland. Again, very important, because what are FRTs considered by the ATF? Machine guns. What are they not? Machine guns exactly like they did with bump stocks. You can see where this is lining up. This is a very strategic move, and I'm not against it, to be honest. It's a smart move, particularly when you look at all the things that are going down with the pistol braces, with the ghost guns, frames, and receivers, all coming out of the Fifth Circuit. This is where the battlefield is, people. Let's keep going. In an open letter to all federal firearms dealers in 2022, the ATF stated, quote, The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives recently examined devices commonly known as Forced Reset Triggers, or FRTs, and has determined that some of them are firearms and machine guns as defined in the National Firearms Act, and machine guns as defined in the Gun Control Act of, of uh, 1968, or the GCA. Now, we all know they're not machine guns. That's the entire point. This is more overreach from an executive bureaucracy changing definitions in order to get their, um, their outcome, their desired outcome. That's the important piece. They are changing laws whole cloth from interpretation, utilizing something called Chevron deference, which basically means the bureaucracies can do whatever they want through their interpretation because the courts have to uh, basically cede power to the bureaucracies, which also coincidentally is up for review next year in the SCOTUS, which we're very excited about. But let's keep going because, again, this is, this is a pretty big thing because all the cards are stacking against this exact same behavior from all executive bureaucracies underneath the Biden administration. But let's continue. Quote, they are harassing our friends at Rare Breed Triggers for making perfectly legal force reset triggers. They've seized merchandise, raided homes, and generally rained terror down on the heads of law-abiding gun owners, said Dudley Brown, president of the NAGR. They're even bringing up Rare Breed, tr rare breed Triggers on civil charges in an attempt to run them out of business. The goal of the Texas lawsuit is to bring an end to the ATF's FRT trigger ban and protect NAGR's members and supporters who own FRTs from an out-of-control ATF. Now, did you catch that? This is a really important piece here. Not only are they in the Fifth Circuit, which just so happened to grant the exact same stay, universal vacature, for the frames and receivers ruling, now they're doing the same thing in the Fifth Circuit for NAGR with force reset triggers. They want that same type of outcome for NAGR members, just like the pistol brace um, relief that was given to individual groups. It looks like NAGR is seeking that exact same relief. Hey, there's a pending lawsuit. You did it with the pistol braces. You've done some cool stuff with the ghost guns, um, the ghost gun legislation, the frames and receivers rule. Can we do that same thing for FRTs? You're starting to see how this is piecemealing becoming something. All right, let's keep going because the, the nuance is where all this stuff lies. Now, under federal law, a machine gun is defined as a weapon which shoots, is designed to shoot, or can be readily restored to shoot automatically more than one shot without manual reloading by a single function of the trigger. This is the definition that has stood unaltered in the law for nearly nine decades that the ATF is now ignoring and try to rewrite through civil charges against our friends at Rare Breed Triggers. There is no dispute that the Rare Breed Triggers FRT only allows one round to be fired for each function of the trigger, which is actually, that is correct, that is actually accurate. Quote, if we allow the ATF to continue to whittle away our rights by constant redefining of what is, what isn't legal, we'll soon be left with no rights at all. Now I'm going to stop there for a second. That's very well said. 
the entire crux of everything that we're facing since the Biden administration came into play was executive overreach, executive interpretation through their bureaucracies and enforcement by changing laws through definitions. That's what we're seeing across the board. They've tried it with the EPA. They've tried it with the CDC. They've tried it with the ATF. They're doing this across the board. They're trying to do it with the FTC. They're trying to do it with all the three-letter agencies because that's all that they can get done. You keep on drawing attention to this. Eventually, this is going to be something. So let's continue here. There should be no authority for a government agency to make the rule of law unilaterally by themselves. See? And the courts need to recognize that, said Hannah Hill, executive director for the National Foundation for Gun Rights, Legal Arm, or the National Association for Gun Rights. So as you can see there, if I back that again, macro here, you've got National Association for Gun Rights going after the FRTs or the interpretation of FRTs through the ATF. They're going after the idea that they want the exact same relief that the pistol brace rule got from the Fifth Circuit and they filed in the Fifth Circuit. And they're going after the idea that the ATF overreach and redefine terms in order to achieve their means. All of these things are held in common with the pistol brace rule, with the ghost gun and uh, frames and receivers rule, and now the FRTs. This is going to become a thing because there's a consistent nature of a government bureaucracy overreaching through interpretation, not Congress. They are usurping the law or the power of Congress in order to achieve their means. That's kind of the important piece here. When you zoom out, you can see where this battlefield is going, and that is really important. The battlefield for our rights, the political battlefield, the battlefield of ideology. Do I need to make that more clear? And that's what I've got for you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you on the next one. I'm Braden. See you later.